How are we doing, guys? It's Judy here with Cricket Strength episode five, and we're going to get stuck into a little bit of a, a discussion point, which people seem wary about for some reason. Uh, first off, we're joined by Gav from FMS UK. How are you doing, Gav? Yeah, good, Judy. Um, so, FMS we use basically as a tool for assessing movement in players uh, and then using that to look at where we can lift them safely uh, and gain the strength and power we need without adding to dysfunctions. Obviously, cricket's a unilateral sport. We see a hell of a lot of uh, upper and lower body dysfunctions around the pelvis and around the shoulder girdle. So we want to make sure we clear them up. So what we're going to do is just show you guys um, our FMS scores from what we did in September. So don't worry about the, the red line through because that was the guy who, who didn't turn up. But if we see through there, we've got some ones, twos and threes. Um, the, the yellow ones, probably a few more than we wanted, but it's the end of the season. And um, you expect a, a few just creeping up now and again. Uh, one of the things that, that, that obviously we talk about is left right asymmetry so if you look at the shoulder mobility particularly there uh there's some one threes one twos um two threes uh, and that's a, a bit of an issue which we've seen gav isn't it yeah yeah definitely definitely so from there they uh, all got a program to work on in the six weeks where they weren't in following postseason and then when we screened them this week we, we've suddenly come up with these results. As you can see already the number of ones is down a lot. Uh, we're getting a lot more closer to symmetry. A lot in the twos and threes, which we want. And so now we're really happy. So, I mean, the good thing is with once you get in this position, then we're looking at just lifting, gaining strength, uh, converting that strength into power, which is what we want with the players. People seem to think if, you, if you're doing FMS, then you don't lift and you don't do strength and all you're doing all day is correctives. But it's not. It's a tool. Um, and Gav can talk to a little bit more about that. It's not a a um, injury predictor. All it tells us is how someone moves. And that's how it came about, Gav, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, I, it's about accountability as well. It's, you know, we've got to know where we can keep someone safe in the weight room and where we're going to potentially do more harm than good. Um, what's been good, and I think, as a lot of the counties are reporting back now, a lot of people will see this side of Christmas as straight into the strength work. Whereas my sort of argument or my the things I'd want to know, as opposed to hitting the weight room straight away, mid November up until Christmas is, you know, what, what state are the guy's bodies in? Where are they? They've had six weeks off. They've had a hard season. As you could see, when we looked at this in September, you know, the guys had come to the end of a long year. But that six week period, a week off, the guys were doing their corrective work and assessing them this week. They're good to go. So the, the point was the FMS isn't it's not a barrier. It's not a, a kind of a camp, the movement camp versus the strength camp. It's just that me personally, I'm not smart enough just to use my eyes to assess how well somebody's moving. And if you think you are, then I'd like to challenge you on that, because the ability to watch somebody and make a diagnosis based on experience or based on potential point of view or opinion, that's not something that I want to risk when it comes to these high-end elite athletes. So data, whatever system, whatever structure you use, you've got to benchmark where somebody is. Um, mm -hmm. And now the exciting thing now is, is at the beginning of the off season they're ready to go and lift in a safe manner because they've done their six weeks work of preparation so you know that's it the and, word, and, yeah the key word there is accountability because you, you you need a for me if you use the fms or any other system you need something to be objective rather than subjective subjectively we can say loads of stuff but no let's put it down let's see no where are they let's not leave any ambiguity there so we know yeah. where they are yeah great and one of the other things that's been great you know the last sort of few days is when you actually then again because the fms is a communication tool between different areas of your staff so as we reviewed the results with coach bowling coach s and c and physio we're all on a very similar page with language so we discussed 
for example, some of the technical work that some of the bowlers were going to be looking to work on. Now, these results we were able to identify, for example, where somebody was and if that physical limitation or imbalance was actually going to inhibit their ability to go and do their drill work. And, you know, there were a couple of guys we spoke about, a couple of the bowlers, a couple of the spinners, that actually we could see that that there was a certain amount of left-right asymmetry imbalance going on that could make a lot of sense as to why they couldn't achieve the positions that the bowling coach wanted them in. So, you know, it became, a, it's twofold this. It's let's understand what they can do in the weight room, what they're ready for, but then let's have a conversation with the bowling coach and understand where he wants to take them and understand where that player is at this moment in time and whether they can go down that road or whether we need some actual work done. On a correct that, that's the, the fantastic thing about where we are at Worcester now is, is we're having the the lead coaches come in, look at it and have a discussion with us about how we move forward with the player. So it's not just physio, S&C coaches, everybody working now in a collaborative way, which is great for the players. Yeah, and, and the work... Again, the bit that really does baffle me, look, we only do two things with our body, locomotion and manipulation. We move from point to point and we tweet all stuff. We do things with our hands. That's it. Nothing else. The skill based level that we move or we choose to move into, whether it's bowling, a golf swing, whatever that may well be, that's the secondary line. So the point is that if you're asking somebody to move, if you're an S&C, you're constantly asking someone to move. If you're a bowling coach, you're asking someone to move. If you don't understand how they can move before they start, I would kind of think that's not logical. Mm. But Definitely. time and time again, we see people trying to coach people with no understanding of what someone can or can't do. So, yeah, so, so from that, we're just going to show you a, a really few little clips here to say, so we've got that base set. We know they're moving well. Now we can load them safely. We know. And this is first session. One of our lads hip thrust in 260. You know, the, the strength there, and there's, there's so much more strength when you get the whole system moving right. We use the analogy of cars all the time. If the front two wheels aren't lined up, you're going to go nowhere pretty quick, and you're going to get the tires scuffing up. Now, just replacing the tires without actually working through the system to make sure the tires are facing forward, it's going to happen again and again. But once you have got everything working well, you can start to build strength and power in a safe way. So we'll just look at some strength exercise there, a few single leg power movements as well. And then we're in, you know, it's, it's, it's happy days. The players are happy because they're feeling that they're actually working and the coach is happy because everything's safe and we're just building strength and power. So guys, that's basically how we use the FMS. We use it as that initial tool, assess where we are, assess what we can do, and then how we can help the player gain their strength and power. And obviously the most important thing, transfer that into their game. So pretty simple that, very quick, but there we are. So Gav, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no worries, mate. We'll catch you later.